All right, I promised a little example problem. The example problem is this. If ship one has V equals 0 0.5 times C, and I mean, we're gonna call that V1, that's the speed as seen by the orb, and ship two moves from it at 0 0.9 C, and I'd have to define that as V2, that's the speed of ship two as seen by ship one, that's gonna be V2. How fast does orb see ship two? All right, so let's do it. We'll plug it into this tiny, tiny equation that I've snuck down here. I'm supposed to, oh, my batteries are low. I'm supposed to add 0.5. Remember, ooh, ooh, this is kind of cool. I can actually cancel everything out and pretend there are C's all over the place. I'm just gonna put in 0.5 plus 0.9. Then I have to put that in parentheses because I wanna divide the entire numerator and I'm gonna divide it by this thing in parentheses. One plus 0.5, well, times 0.9, right? And then close parentheses. Now the cool thing is the C's all canceled and I can just hit enter, then I can find, whoa! I can find that V, that's the speed of ship two as seen by the orb, and you should try this also. Do not trust my calculator work. I find V to be 0 0.9655 times the speed of light. So. Einstein has set this up beautifully. Look at this denominator. It kind of looks like the absolute value of the square of gamma or something, square of f. It's like, uh, uh, ooh, gosh, product of square. Oh, man, very interesting. We could derive this, but I'm not going to do it this year. Maybe I'll do it sometime later. Anyway, uh, if you get this velocity right here, you're doing just fine. And notice how Einstein has managed to get 0.5 plus 0.9 to be less than 1. Yes, good job, Einstein. And you could stack these and you could talk about velocity addition if one's going this way and the other one's going this way. Turns out only the component in the direction that you're going becomes a problem. But that's the end of our simple example. I'll set up a different problem for later. Goodbye.